Now I'm sure you've probably heard people say that a ball is a ball is a ball is a ball is whatever this is. And that statement is accurate. These are all balls. However, they're very different in terms of materials, construction, and certainly in regards to price. So with that in mind, what's the actual difference? Ladies and gentlemen, uh, welcome to the Nike flight ball line comparison. I should also mention that if you're interested in any of the new Nike flight balls, high end or low end, I'll leave a little pop up on screen or you can click the first link down below. That's gonna take you to the review page on my website where you'll find buy it now links for all these different balls in all kinds of different colorways below their normal retail prices. Also, if you guys do end up enjoying this video and perhaps would like to see more ball reviews on the channel, don't forget to support this one with a like. And if you're new here watching for the first time and don't wanna miss out on weekly content on everything football boots and footballs, make sure you hit that subscribe button. So I guess we'll start with the most insignificant ball in this lineup, and that is the Mini, which retails for $12. And as you can see, based on its very terrible 12 panel construction, it basically has corners. It's not very round. It's extremely cheap in terms of materials as well as overall build quality, but it's $12, so what do you expect? And it's a mini ball, so not the best mini ball I've ever seen, but it, it, it's, it, it's mini. As for the four main balls in the lineup, the price breakdown is as follows. At the very top, you have the Nike Flight Ball, which retails for $160. Below that, you have the Nike Club Elite, which retails for $60, a huge price difference from just the first takedown in the lineup. Then below that, you have the Nike Strike Ball, which in a licensed colorway, like I have here with this Serie A coloring, it retails for $35. If you get a general colorway without any licensing, it retails for 30 bucks. So you save that extra $5. Then you have the Nike Pitch. Licensed or not, it retails for 20. And for the sake of the a ball is a ball argument, for one of these, you could buy two of these and have a little bit left over. For one of these, you could buy five of these and have a little bit left over. And for one of these, you could buy eight of these. So with all that said, we'll start at the top and work our way down. Now I would say there's been an abnormal amount of hype around this year's match ball from Nike, and that's because the Nike flight ball is quite unusual in terms of its overall appearance. Unlike the launch kind of all white colorway that I did a video on going over all the details, I have here as an example, the Premier League ball, I said it right, so don't get mad at me, in white with red, black, and silver accents, which actually looks quite cool. And something that I really like is this here, all the leagues have a little bit of a different graphic. So I also have the match ball for Serie A, which as you can see is a white base with blue, yellow, and red accents. That's a similar design, but not quite exactly the same, both of which I quite like the look of. Now from a tech perspective, there's a lot going on here, and I'm gonna run you through everything very briefly, but if you're looking for more detailed information on the technology here, I'm gonna leave a little pop-up on screen to that initial video that I made on the Nike Flight Ball, but the main technology everyone's hyped about with this ball has to do with the way that it looks, and that is these weird grooves. It's what they're calling AeroSculpt technology, which are these deep grooves highlighted in red on this particular colorway that run across the entire surface of the ball. The idea is not just to look cool or for better, I guess, grip for the goalkeepers trying to catch the ball. It actually has to do with aerodynamics, where according to Nike, they did tons and tons of testing. In fact, they even left it on the regular ball. This is the 68th variation with this particular concept, where the end result is a football, according to Nike, that flies 30% more true than any other football they've ever made, basically allowing for maximum predictability. End result being that if you kick the ball straight, it's supposed to go straight. Aside from the grooves, the ball itself is pretty similar to last year's Nike Merlin match ball, where it still features a four panel construction. All of those panels fuse welded together because of this design and the shape of the panels. It allows for 40% fewer seams on the ball than a traditional football construction would have, which basically just means that you have less hard spots and a more consistent kind of contact point with the ball when you strike it, no matter what part of your foot makes contact with the ball. It also does feature Nike's ACC technology, and to go along with that, technically part of the ACC is this 3D ink micro texturing that you can very faintly see on the surface. It's a little bit noticeable to your fingers, but honestly, when you actually have your boots on and you make contact with the ball, it feels pretty similar from a texture standpoint to previous Nike match balls. Obviously, the material of the ball also pretty much the same as what we've seen from Nike in the past. Very high quality, extremely well made, also very durable. And from a weight and feel perspective, it's very similar again to previous season match balls from Nike. And then of course it is 
FIFA approved. It is FIFA Quality Pro more specifically, and we'll get into what that actually means a little bit later in the video. Basically what you need to know is that this is the best of the best in terms of match balls currently on offer from Nike. And if you watch the Premier League as an example, this is the exact ball that they use on TV. As far as how it compares to the rest of the line, there really isn't much of a comparison to be made. This is the best of the best in this lineup of footballs by a long shot. Match balls in general, I would say, are a bit of an acquired taste. Some people think they're totally worth it. Some people think they're not worth it at all. And that's largely down to the very high price tag of $160. I understand why somebody wouldn't want to spend that kind of money on a single ball. But with that said, if you want the best of the best, if you want the exact ball that the pros use on TV, this is it. You can actually buy it. And from a quality and performance standpoint, it has pretty much everything you could possibly want. It is the most high-tech football on the market right now. And if that appeals to you, I think you'll enjoy your experience with it. Also, a little piece of information for people buying a match ball for the first time. Part of what makes a match ball feel the way that it does, that more premium sensation, has to do with the bladder made out of a softer material, which means that the ball will lose air more quickly. So if you buy a match ball and you're surprised that after a day or two that it's lost a significant amount of air it's not broken it's not leaking that's just how match balls are that's one of the main differences you're going to find from a top of the line fifa approved match ball and a much cheaper 30 or 20 dollar ball that kind of holds its air for an entire month just keep a hand pump in your bag and it shouldn't be an issue which brings us to the 60 dollar nike club ball which in a lot of ways i actually like it but at the same time for 60 dollars compared to some of the 60 dollar options on off from a brand like Select, I feel like the ball could be a little bit better quality. Now from a materials and tech perspective, this is almost entirely different from the top end Nike flight ball. The one thing that it does have in common is clear to see and that is the aero sculpt texturing or grooves that you have across the entire surface of the ball. But beyond that, it's completely different. The panel construction, you'll notice that it has a 12 panel construction made out of these one, two, three, four, is that a pentagon? That is a pentagon. So there are 12 pentagons that make up the entire ball. Kind of a callback to the previous generation of match balls before the Merlin and before the Nike flight ball. This used to be the panel construction that they went with, but unlike those previous match balls, this is all hand stitched, no fuse welding whatsoever. And while I think the build quality is decent, it's far from perfect. And in terms of hand stitched balls, I really don't think that anybody does it better than the Select brand, especially for $60. I feel like it could be a little bit more premium. Maybe I'm being a little bit nitpicky, but that to me just looks a little bit cheap. The ball is perfectly round, so there's that. The material on the surface is decent, although not as premium as I would expect it to be at this price point. It does have a slight micro texturing to it as well. In terms of feel, it's very similar, I would say, to a lot of those previous generation Nike match balls in terms of weight. It's a little bit softer, which I think is down to the material that they've used. And something else that is interesting is the FIFA approved badge, where you can see it says FIFA quality rather than FIFA quality pro. Now I've expressed my opinion on the whole FIFA approved system and why I think it's a bit of a scam in a previous video. I'll leave a pop-up on screen for those that are curious. And in that video, I kind of discuss what the FIFA approved tests actually are, but once upon a time, Time, your ball could just be certified as FIFA approved. Now there are two certifications, FIFA Quality and FIFA Quality Pro. What's the difference? Well, there really isn't a difference in terms of the actual testing that the ball goes through, which is mostly just measurements that have nothing to do with actual feel or performance characteristics, which is totally backwards. But basically the difference is that the ball has to pass all seven of these tests no matter what. The difference is that the FIFA Quality Pro certification has stricter requirements for those seven tests. So this is FIFA Quality Pro, which means it can actually be used in a FIFA sanctioned match, where this is just FIFA quality, which means that it couldn't be used in a FIFA sanctioned match because it didn't meet the FIFA quality pro certifications. It just has a FIFA approved badge for the sake of being FIFA approved. All that to say that this certification actually means something and this certification is just pure marketing. Overall, I think the Club Elite is a solid ball and if you don't have the money for the top end model, but you really wanna try a decent quality ball, 
with the AeroSculpt grooves, then I suppose it's worth the money. But for me personally, if I had this kind of budget to spend on a football, I would probably spend 40 bucks on a Select Numero 10 over this. At the 30 or $35 price point, depending on which colorway you go for, you have the Nike Strike, which is kind of the main ball that every sports store is going to have in stock, even if they don't carry higher end equipment. And for the most part, it's a decent ball. It does feature the same 12 panel construction, all stick just like what you have on the Club Elite, but the actual panel material itself is a lot cheaper this time around. Technically, it does feature the AeroSculpt grooves, but because of the material used, they're a little bit less significant. This is more like the AeroTrack grooves found on the previous generation Merlins and Ordums, rather than kind of the more wavy design that you find on the higher end variants. Nonetheless, you are still getting some significant texturing, and for a $30 ball, compared to previous generation of Nike Strike balls, I should say, this actually doesn't feel that bad. It does have a micro texturing that is also very similar to what we used to see on Nike's top end match balls, which is kind of nice to see, although the material on the surface in general is a little bit more slick than the higher end models. From a build quality and durability perspective, it's pretty solid. You can expect it to last a decent amount of time. And in terms of actual performance, it's all right. It's one of those cheaper balls that kind of feels and performs like a cheaper ball would. If you are a fan of the way that this looks and you have a $30 budget, I think for the most part, you're gonna be pretty happy with this. But again, I would personally rather spend the extra 10 bucks and buy something like a Select Numero 10 and just end up with a better overall football. Which brings us to the final ball in the lineup, the Nike Pitch, which retails for $20. And that is reflected in the overall quality of both the materials as well as the way that it's put together. Unlike the balls above it, it does not feature any grooves. It's not textured at all. The surface is completely smooth and very, very slippery. This uses pretty much the cheapest possible material you're gonna find on a ball from the Nike brand. And just like the two balls above it, it does feature a 12 panel pentagon shaped construction. But if you look really closely at the stitching, it's a little bit shoddy. It's not extremely well made at all. And uh, I'm not sure that it's even completely round. If you throw a ball in the air and spin it, pro tip by the way, if it has a little bit of a wobble to it, it's kind of gone egg shape and that's not what you want. You want your ball to be perfectly round and this one simply is not. And I think that has a lot to do with the construction of the panels as well as the panel shapes themselves. It's very common to see this on a lot of cheaper balls. I don't wanna say that this is a football that I couldn't recommend because I think if you're at the store and you just want a cheap ball that you don't have to care about and if it's broken after a week, it doesn't really matter, then by all means buy a Nike pitch. But if you're buying a football that you plan on taking care of and you actually want a decent ball, I would personally recommend spending the extra 10 bucks and buying the strike variant over the pitch. This to me is just not very good. Just look at the stitching here, like what is that? And there you have it, no real surprises here. Ranking them from best to worst would pretty much be the same as ranking them from most expensive to least expensive. The top end flight ball is by far the best. The low end Nike pitch ball is by far the worst. And then these two are somewhere in the middle. Personally, I would actually buy a pitch before I bought a Club Elite, but they're both solid in their own respective ways, depending on what you're looking for. But that's pretty much it, the entire Nike flight ball line comparison. Hopefully you guys found this video helpful and informative. If you did, be sure to support it with a like. If you're interested in any of these balls for yourself below their normal retail prices, you can click the first link down below that's gonna take you to the review page on my website, where you'll find buy now links with exclusive SR4U coupon codes, again, to get all of these balls in multiple different colors below their normal retail price. If you have any questions, as always, feel free to ask them all down below in the comment section, and I'll do my best to get an answer out to you. If you aren't subscribed to the channel already, make sure you hit that subscribe button along with the little bell notification so you get notified when the next new video goes live. You can find all my social media information linked down below in the description as well. And other than that, guys, thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next one. If I do this, this is gonna be so impressive. Oh, no.